Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. All right, so we are moving on through these final fictional stories of HP Lovecraft. Eventually gonna have to work on his poetry, but for now, finishing up the prose. These last several stories are pretty tenuously connected to Lovecraft, but it seems like he has some sort of involvement in their creation. Today's story is Deaf, Dumb, and Blind by Lovecraft and C.M. Eddy Jr. It was first published in April 1925 in Weird Tales. If you're new to the channel, the way that these reviews work is I do a brief synopsis of what happens in the story, all the plot and action, and then wrap up with just some thoughts and things about what it all means, if it's any good, whether it is worth your time to read. I sort of do these, um, assuming that you've already read this story for the most part. So it will be, you know, heavily spoilered as much as you can say that a story from 1924 has been spoiled. Uh, but here you go. Uh, synopsis. In 1924, Dr. Morehouse and some men pull up to the old Tanner house and hear a typewriter uh, clicking away inside. Inside lives the war injured, that's World War One injured, uh, deaf, dumb, and blind poet Richard Blake. Uh, whose servant Dobb has recently abandoned him. Uh, the Tanner House has a dark history going back to the Salem Witch Trials involving its final um, owner, uh, Simeon Tanner, who was found dead and uh, is said to have had tiny nubs of little horns coming out of his head and that there were also tunnels under the house leaving, uh, leading into the swamp but underneath it as well. Uh, inside, uh, Dr. Morehouse finds the body of Richard Blake. He declares him having been dead for 30 minutes. However, they just heard typing not 10 minutes ago, but the house seems otherwise empty. There is also uh, present a manuscript um, that obviously the writer had been working on. Uh, he takes it home, he reads it, and his family finds him in a sorry state, almost near catatonic from the result of having read some despicable thing, which... Uh, leads him to then buy the house and have it destroyed and any semblance of tunnels ever found um, destroyed as well. The second half of the story is the manuscript itself. Uh, Richard Blake, who can't hear, see, or speak and is paralyzed, has um, been abandoned by his servant Dobbs. He gradually... Uh, begins to realize uh, that he is completely isolated from the world because Dobbs had been his only um, aid in communicating with the outside. Uh, gradually, terror grips him, and he considers suicide but resists it. Um, uh, he then finds himself able to hear. He hears many tormented souls, and he sort of sees images of them in flames. He also smells sulfur and smoke, and he feels a cold, burning... Um, uh, frigid touch on his skin. Um, after his death, uh, it is revealed that um, there is one final paragraph written on the or type on the page, but obviously not in his own voice. It says, "Not for mortal mind is any resisting of force beyond human imagination. Not for immortal spirit is any conquering of that which hath probed the depths and made the immortality a transient moment." The, um, the end, nay, it is but the blissful beginning. All right, so um, it looks like Simeon Taylor, uh, Tanner rather, uh, his house had a portal to hell beneath it, um, somehow dug under the swamps, if you can get to uh, hell from digging under a swamp. Um, Lovecraft does not usually deal in Satan. You have references to satanic cults, but mainly uh, Lovecraft deals with his own pantheon, so that's a little bit odd for this story, and there's no doubt... Um, uh, an artifact of Eddie's uh, touch on the story rather than Lovecraft, I would guess. Um, like so many of these minor tales that I've been covering lately, um, the concept is better than the result and what is actually given to us on the page. The buildup is a little bit weak. Um, the stuff about Simeon Tanner is intriguing, but I could have used more uh, to really... Um, to dive into it. Um, it would have been interesting if there were, were a third section of the story that was set back in time and really went in depth about uh, Tanner and his doings. Uh, but we don't get that. Um, I think the manuscript section itself was on um, the perspective of the war victim uh, was the more intriguing section. Um, this idea that he's been isolated in himself for six years, unable to uh, hear, uh, to see, to move, to speak, and that just this, this form of communication that he's uh, been able to forge with his 
servant is his only window on the world. And that's very interesting to be completely isolated and trapped in yourself like that. Um, it must be horrifying, but also imagine what you could do with the lack of distractions with your writing. I think, um, and then that's really it. Um, uh, it's important that he is a writer, that the character is a writer. Um, this ability to um, to be isolated in this dark place and then communicate it out to the world through your written words. And I feel like um, if you could suggest that there's anything autobiographical about this story, it is that um, Lovecraft and Eddie and others who write in horror, um, it's that ability to translate the darkness of the human soul into something tangible on the page and to create fear where there is none. Um, and then there is that final quote, that quote that says, not for mortal mind is any resisting a force beyond human imagination and so on. Very awkwardly, awkwardly written, um, but it does remind me of one thing. It reminds me of, of Nietzsche, um, the, the line about um, if you stare too long into the abyss, the abyss also stares into you. I'm paraphrasing. It reminds me very much of that line, and I feel like, um, although there is a historical, a fictional historical element here with Tanner, um, in the case of Blake, uh, I feel like having been him having been shut off for six years may have sort of opened him to this experience of uh, being in the darkness alone for too, for far too long. But yeah, you know, overall, uh, a little weak, but also. Plenty of fun, you know. It's like a half-hour read, um, so no big deal. You get your time. Uh, you won't, <laughs> you won't miss that time in your life, I think. Uh, so, you know, if you're gonna read it, read it once. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea, but yeah, you know, take it or leave it. Um, it is one of these minor tales, and I'm a completist. So, uh, there you have it. So let me check and see what we have coming next time. Um, it looks like uh, up next we'll be looking at the Love Dead, the uh, very controversial H.P. Lovecraft and C.M. Eddie Jr. tale about, uh, you know happens when you love the dead, you know? <laughs> A little bit uh, crazy there, but all right then. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, keep it creepy.